Hello everybody, thank you for joining today. This is Mark with XPX Cooling Technologies. Today we're going to be talking about the Marley branded ABH basin heater system. The basin heater panel is used when you want to keep the water in your basin from freezing when your tower is shut down. So right here I have a ABH panel. These panels are typically installed in the field, not on the tower, but generally down below the tower somewhere on some standoffs. The major components of the system of a basin heater package is a basin heater element, which I have right here. These are generally three phase elements. They're installed through the cold water basin. The other element is an RTD, which is also installed through the cold water basin of the tower and located real close to the basin heater element. And then the third major component is the control panel. This is a thermostatically controlled on-off type of device. The RTD senses the temperature of the water in the basin and the controller on the front of this panel basically turns the heater element on and off. So I'm going to talk about this basin heater element real quick. This is considered a high density basin heater element. This one here is 7,500 watts. Comes with a conduit head that you attach your conduit to. Inside are your three power wires. And also inside, you're going to find nested within the heater elements and coming out of the conduit head is a thermal cutoff device. That gets nested inside. It's very important that this gets wired back to this control panel. That's another safety for over temperature cutout. And you can run these two wires in the same conduit as your power wiring. The RTD have right here is an industrial RTD. It has these two silver contact points which conducts electricity through the water from one point to the other point. That's how the panel knows that the RTD and the basin heater element are submerged in water. If this is not in water, if it's in dry air, then the panel will not energize. The reason for that it is, since this is a high density heater element, if you energize it in dry air, it will turn cherry red and burn out in just a couple of minutes. So this is a safety low water cutout used in combination with the TCO cutout. So for some reason, if this does get energized in the air and starts getting really hot, there's a little pellet inside this that will melt, shutting the panel off. And we're going to talk about the panel a little bit. This is a fiberglass NEMA 4X outdoor panel. It's a watertight enclosure. And when you're installing this panel, make sure, it's very important, make sure that you run all your conduits in and out of this panel, out of the bottom of the panel. Reason being is, this control panel generally is located at a lower elevation, so any condensation building up into the conduit will find its way down and try to get inside this panel. After you have it attached in there and your wires ran, put some expanding foam inside the conduit. And that acts as a nice vapor barrier between the air that's in the conduit getting into this panel. On the very front here is a main disconnect. And if you want to do lockout, tag out, you just pull this little red piece of plastic out, put your lockout, tag out, lock here, lock it up. Then you're safe to work on anything downstream on your basin heater element. Over here on this side, this is your thermostat. We got a couple lights on the door here. Anytime your heat element is energized and drawing current, this light will come on saying basin heater on. If the heater element is failed, if it rots out and there's an open circuit in the heater elements and this thing tries to energize and doesn't see a current draw, then your basin heater fail light will come on. This is a test button. With the panel energized, at any time, you can walk up to the panel and as long as your temperature probe is submerged in water, you can depress this button for a few seconds. And if the heater element is good, it'll come on. If the heater element is bad, it'll show you a, fade heat, a failed heater element. Next, we're going to talk about the internal components of the panel. Your handle has to be in the off position in order to get the door open. If it's in the on position, there's an interlock preventing you from opening the panel while it's energized. We'll swing it open here. I want to point this out to you right away. This is the shop drawing for the panel. It shows all your field connections with wire numbers and so forth, so always look at this. Here's your main disconnect. 
which is interlocked with this handle here on the outside of the panel. The heater is connected to the three-phase contactor right here. We have a control power transformer here to knock down the supply voltage down to 120 for use with your pilot control and temperature controller. Over here is where you make your field connections for your RTD and other devices like the TCO that I showed you earlier. This circuit card right here is your low water cutout card. It's a conductivity card. And as we talked about before, the temperature probe conducts electricity between these two points. That information gets transmitted to this low water cutout card. So if this is not submerged in water, the card sees that and does not allow the panel to be energized. This device right here is a current sensing relay. This is used to tell the panel that, okay, I've called for heat, I'm trying to energize, but I don't see any current draw. That's when it's going to tell the panel that I have a failed basin heater element. Works on a current draw. Sometimes in cooling towers, you'll have one heater element, you have two, you might have four heater elements. When you have multiple heater elements in your cooling tower cell, what you want to do is wire all those heaters in parallel with each other and just bring three wires back all the way to this panel and connect at the load side of the contactor. I'm going to go ahead and close this up and then we're going to talk about operation. So right here I have a, a cup of ice water, trying to get the temperature down. Got the basin heater element wired into the panel. Uh, we're all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and throw power to the panel. As I do this, you'll see the temperature control starting to boot up. Okay, the temperature controller is now booted up and everything's operational. In fact, during that process, my cold water temperature was cold enough, we went ahead and we did energize the basin heater element. So the system is actually running right now. So I want to show you on the display of this temperature controller. The top line, which is called PV or process variable, that's your actual water temperature that you're seeing. So right now, in this glass of water, it's seeing 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The second display is your set point, and we ship these out at 42 degrees. And what that means is, when the temperature drops to 40, we're gonna energize. When the temperature rises to 45, we're gonna de-energize. So this is the set point in between those two values. As you'll see, the, uh, everything's okay. My basin heater contactor is engaged. Not only am I engaged, I'm actually drawing current, which is good indication to you that the heater element is actually good. We're actually doing work. So the light is on right now. And I'm gonna show you the low water cutout feature of this real quick. So right now you'll see my temperature probe is submerged in water. If I lift this up, the low water cutout circuit is going to engage and de-energize the panel just that fast. So there's your, your safety low water cutout. I'm gonna put it back in. We're now submersed, temperature's down low. We just energized. Okay, next we're gonna show how the control panel reacts when you have a failed or open circuit in the basin heater element. You can push this button right here to test your circuit. Now what I did, I removed the probe and I put it in a bottle of warmer water. So we're showing a temperature of 71 degrees. So this panel will not energize until the temperature drops down to 40. But by pressing this button, I'm gonna bypass this controller circuit and I'm gonna to try to energize the basin heater element. I still have my basin heater element connected to the panel, but I disconnect the wires inside to represent a failed or open circuit in my basin heater element. So I'm gonna push this in, you gotta hold it in just for a few seconds. And that circuit card on the inside is gonna look for a current draw. It's not gonna see it. And what happens is the light comes on, I try to energize, I pulled in my contactor, but I'm not seeing any current draw. That means something's wrong with the basin heater element, and then it lights up the light for you. Now you can diagnose your problem, do an ohm check on the leads of your basin heater element and, and see what the problem is. I do have documentation on this panel. I have a engineering and data sheet, and I also have a user manual with a troubleshooting guide in the back and a full wiring diagram to help you out in the field. These two documents are available on spxcooling.com. Keyword would be ABH or basin heater panel. Thank you for joining.